Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. This is my first video and obviously I had to start with the hottest of hot topics, the Johnny Depp trial. And I am going to sum up the entire case for you in under 12 minutes. For those of you who don't know, I am an attorney and I have been told that I am the master of breaking things down. So I'm gonna make this really easy for you to understand. And by the end of this video, you will be able to talk to anybody about any aspect of the case and know what you're talking about. So I got my notes ready, we're ready to go. Let's get into it. So what you need to know is that Johnny Depp was married to Amber Heard. After they got divorced, Amber Heard wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post on December 18th, 2018, and she claimed that she was a victim and survivor of sexual violence, domestic abuse, physical violence, all of those things. Now, Johnny says that none of that is true. So he filed a lawsuit for defamation seeking $50 million. This lawsuit came less than three months after the article was published in the Washington Post. Johnny was not messing around. He got straight into court on March 1st, 2019 and filed his complaint. Now, the basis for his damages was that he lost $50 million because he didn't get the role in Pirates of the Caribbean 6 as Jack Sparrow because of this article. This lawsuit was in Virginia. And you might be asking, just like a lot of other people, why was this lawsuit in Virginia? Well, that's because the Washington Post had servers in Virginia. Weird, I know. But essentially, a court needs to have jurisdiction to try a case. Johnny went venue shopping, which is picking the venue that's most favorable to your actions. So Virginia had the most favorable defamation laws and Johnny managed to find a way in because the Washington Post who published Amber's op-ed had servers in Virginia. Johnny's complaint specifically referenced four statements. So it wasn't the op-ed as a whole that he was suing on, it was specifically four statements, although only three of these statements made it into the trial. I'm only gonna go over these three because that's what's important for this video, so let's go. One, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Two, then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. And three, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Now, like I said, this defamation suit was in regards to these three statements specifically. After Johnny sued Amber in 2019, about a year later, Johnny's attorney made some statements to the Daily Mail about Amber. So what did Amber do? Amber countersued Johnny for defamation because of Johnny's attorney's statements to the Daily Mail. Now you might be wondering, how can she sue Johnny's attorney? Well, that's because of vicarious liability, which means essentially that Johnny and his attorney had a principal agent relationship. Under vicarious liability, the principal is liable for the acts of the agent. This is what we call vicarious liability and the law is what we call responding out superior. And essentially, unfortunately, Johnny can be liable for his attorney's actions under this principle. So at this point, we have a lawsuit by Johnny and a countersuit by Amber. Johnny's seeking $50 million, Amber is seeking $100 million. Now let's go over how these parties win on their defamation claim. So we know that Johnny has three statements specifically that he was saying is are defamatory. And it's not that he needs to win on all three, he can win on one and still be entitled to damages. So you have to look at each of these statements by themselves and answer these questions slash elements. They're elements of defamation, but for the ease of things, we're just going to position them as questions. So the first question that you have to ask is, did Amber Heard make these statements? Yeah, I mean, she's the one who wrote the op-ed. The second question is, does the statement imply or insinuate anything about Mr. Depp? And that's for the jury to decide. Do these statements imply that they're about Johnny? Three, were the statements seen by anyone other than Mr. Depp? Now, because this was published in the Washington Post and Amber retweeted it on Twitter, it's obvious that other people besides Johnny saw these statements. Four, did the statement convey a defamatory implication to someone who saw them other than Johnny? Five, are the implications or insinuations about Johnny false? Six, were the statements made with actual malice? And this is why some attorneys say that actually all attorneys say that defamation when it relates to public figures is especially hard to win. And that's because public figures have a higher burden of proof. So 
When you're suing a public figure for defamation, you have to prove actual malice instead of just malice. Actual malice is harder to prove. Um, you have to essentially show that the person making the statements knew that they were false or did so with such a reckless disregard for the truth. Now this entails getting into the person's mental state and that's why it's much harder to prove because you kind of got to look at Amber's mental state in answering this question and figure out was this done with actual malice. And actual malice has to be proven by clear and convincing evidence, which is a higher burden of proof than all the other elements of defamation. So all those other, all those other questions slash elements I went over, those have to be proven by preponderance of the evidence, which just means more than likely yes. So if you can answer those questions more than likely yes, then you answer yes. As far as actual malice though, you know, Johnny's team had to create a clear belief that this was done with actual malice. It's not just more than likely yes, it is a clear belief. And that's why attorneys say defamation when it comes to public figures is very hard to win. So if you can answer all of those statements with yes, then that statement is defamatory. And like I said before, because Johnny's suing on three statements where he did sue on three statements, you have to take them separately. So he could have won on one and lost on two. He could have lost on one and won on two. He could have lost all of them, won all of them. We now know that he did win on all three statements. Now let's get into Amber's counterclaim. And then after this, I'll give you the verdict and I'll talk about damages a little bit, but let's talk about Amber's counterclaim. She stated that the following three statements by Johnny's attorney, Adam Waldman, were false. One, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake allegations as both a sword and a shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Second statement, Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. And the third statement, we have reached the beginning of the end of Miss Heard's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. To prove that these three statements were defamatory, Amber's team had to show, again by preponderance of the evidence, so more than likely yes, that these things happened. One, Adam Waldman made the statement. We already know the answer is yes to that. The statement was about Amber. The answer is obviously yes. The statement was seen by someone other than Amber. Yes, because it was published in the Daily Mail. The statement is false. That's up to the jury. The statement was made with actual malice. So again, we have that actual malice element that has a higher burden of proof, that clear and convincing standard. Now, if Amber's team were to prove all of this and all of those questions I just went over were yes, then Amber prevails on each of her statements. Again, Amber's three statements have to be looked at separately. So just like Johnny, she could have won one, lost two, won two, lost one, any combination. So in the end, the jury found that all three statements that Amber made in the Washington Post that Johnny sued on were defamatory, all three of them. As far as Amber's counterclaim, the jury found that only one of the statements was defamatory. And that was the statement in regards to, uh, you know, the setup that the officers came to the penthouse, searched and interviewed, left after not seeing any damage. Amber and her friends spilled a little wine, roughed the place up, got their story straight. Uh, and then place a second call to 911. So the jury did find that that statement was defamatory, but the other two, not defamatory. As a result, the jury awarded Johnny $10 million in compensatory damages and 5 million in punitive damages. Amber, because she won on one of her, you know, alleged defamatory statements, she was awarded 2 million in compensatory damages and zero in punitive damages. Now keep this in mind, Virginia has a statutory cap on punitive damages. Punitive damages cannot exceed 350,000. So the jury is welcome to award whatever they want. They can award $20 million in punitive damages, but regardless, the judge is required to reduce those damages to the statutory cap. So Johnny's 5 million in punitive damages that he was awarded was capped at 350,000. And as a result, in total, Johnny was awarded $10,350,000. Amber got no punitive damages, so nothing to cap, right? So she, she gets the 2 million compensatory damages, 
in full. It, compensatory damages aren't capped. Now let's talk briefly about the difference between compensatory and punitive. Compensatory is exactly what it sounds like. It is to compensate the prevailing party for any damages they may have suffered. This can be lost wages, failed brand partnerships, anything like that. Punitive damages is also exactly how it sounds. It is to punish the party who did the wrong. I have a feeling that the reason that Amber didn't get punitive damages is because the jury didn't want to punish Johnny for statements made by his attorney, although the jury did decide there was a principal agency relationship there. I don't think the jury felt right about punishing Johnny and awarding Amber punitive damages considering the statements didn't actually come from Johnny. We can really quickly talk about what happens if Amber can't pay that, which we know she can't because her attorney was on the Today Show the day after the verdict was read and said that Amber can't pay it. Um, and so in this case, she can file for bankruptcy to attempt to discharge the debt, but if the court determines that her action was malicious and willful, which I have a feeling they would considering actual malice was proved, then the discharge, then the debt cannot be discharged. In which case, Johnny, who becomes the creditor once the final judgment is entered, he will have to essentially chase the money. So he has different options. He can garnish her wages, a percentage of them, right? Uh, in accordance with the law, or he can place liens on property she owns or she will own in the future. So until that debt is paid, he has options to recoup. He can also choose to forgive the debt, which I think is a possibility. So he can choose to forgive the debt because he already said he's not in it for the money. Or I think if he does receive anything, he may donate it. I don't know. It just seems like a very Johnny thing to me. So this is the Johnny Depp trial summed up in less than 12 minutes. Let me know what other cases you wanna hear about and let me know if this explanation helped you because like I said, I am a self-proclaimed master of breaking things down, but you be the, you be the decision maker here. I'll leave it up to you. You can be the jury.